I've come here from Toronto, New Mexico, Montreal, and Occupy Wall Street. So I want to talk a little bit about what I've seen in some of the other Occupy movements. What I've learned and some of my fears and some of my concerns about the next stage of this movement. The next stage of this movement is going to be how we deal with conflict. Internal conflict and the repression that will certainly come when the people in these buildings and the police become uptight. So first of all, this is not a protest. One thing I've learned in this process is that this is not a protest. This is a movement. It's hard for the media to articulate what this movement is because we don't have demands. But this is not true. Movements don't operate with demands. Movements operate with process. Instead of making demands that will be negotiated for years with elected politicians, which we've already tried for years with elected politicians, we're trying to demonstrate our values and articulate something much bigger than demands. We're failing in our culture from a lack of imagination. And what we're achieving here is space for imagination. This is not just a revolution. It's a collective movement to collectively pull a handbrake, an emergency brake. This capitalist growth-based economy can only survive with growth at 3% a year. That means in 24 years, the size of this economy will double. Our waterways, our fish, our forests, our young people can't tolerate that kind of growth. So this is a crisis of growth. And the shadow side of our economic system is ecological degradation. And this is a movement because it's diverse. In order to be diverse, we have to communicate with people outside and beyond what we know. We have to communicate with those we don't know we have to listen. This takes compassion and imagination. Compassion is hard work, but it's the work worth doing. Listening is hard work, but it's the work worth doing. So this Occupy movement has to learn to listen to other views in order to cultivate imagination again. This movement is going to win because it's not hierarchical. You can't meet hierarchy with hierarchy. You have to meet hierarchy with creativity. The enemy of creativity is anger. When you're angry, you're not creative. 
because you think you're right and you think they're wrong. The 1% do not deserve our hatred. They deserve our compassion. Our hatred will burn us out. So what we've achieved so far is a space where we're slowing down. It's too early to make demands. Instead, we have to stop and wait for our imagination collectively to come together to articulate a way of living based on the values of interdependence, of compassion, of diversity, not anger. When you're angry, don't do anything, don't say anything, go for a walk, find your breath, practice yoga. If you're not into yoga, have a beer, find your breath, but don't do anything. Find out how you feel. And underneath what you feel is creativity. But don't put up the invisible, idealistic Gandhi shield, which when it's philosophical, gets nothing done. Anger isn't bad. So you need to take the momentum of your anger, because the momentum of anger gets things done. But it only works if it's merged with creativity. So we need the momentum of anger because the next stage of this movement is going to be demonstrating how when we meet viewpoints opposed to our viewpoints, anger arises. And we need to show that we can meet that anger and opposing viewpoints with creativity. And that creativity is going to show our values. This isn't about making demands. It's creating a space for imagination. And we've accomplished that. Yesterday evening, I was here when a young woman died. This is tragic. But please don't turn her into a symbol. She's not a metaphor. Camping here is not a metaphor. It's not a philosophy. It's being human. What we need is to be human. We want the 1% to, to become human again. To become human again. To remain human. When the Buddha started assembling a community, he told them to wear robes. And go and find robes out of discarded material. If the material had been eaten by rats, if material had been thrown away, you should take that material and make robes out of it. Whether you like the Buddha or not, this is a wonderful practice. To take what's discarded and bring it into your heart. When there's diversity, we have to take parts of our community that we've discarded. Because there are people that we treat like garbage. There are parts of the ecosystem that we treat like garbage. 
There are parts of ourselves that we treat like garbage. And we have to take these pieces that we've compartmentalized and bring them into this space. That's how imagination happens. Yeah, And that's how we'll win. It's not philosophical. It's not ideological. It's about showing and demonstrating simple living, interdependence, knowing how to take care of our anger, not meeting anger with anger. Is this possible? Well, showing it. The media don't know how to report on this. Because the media need demands and they need violence. And we won't give them demands or violence. We won't give them demands because we're articulating a much bigger dream. And we won't give them violence because we're taking care of our anger. Those of you who live here those of you who support this, you're undertaking a major responsibility to become peacemakers. Not this absurd term of peacekeeper, but making peace internally and making peace externally. That's why this is a spiritual movement creating a new kind of military, making peace, simultaneous peace, inward and outward. This is the future of the military, is to make peace in all directions. And that's what we're showing. We don't need to articulate that with lists and demands. We need to show it. Don't be afraid to talk about love. Don't be afraid to talk about kindness. When we lose something, when we lose someone we love, when we finish an exhale, when we lose a paradigm, we're always so quick to, we, to find a new lover, a new paradigm, and it never works. Well, one night stands are kind of fun, but they don't last, because we're too quick. And when we let go and pull the brakes, we have to let there be space. And out of that space, we can articulate and imagine and sow the seeds of a different way of living. So don't feel under pressure to figure out demands. We need to enter the space that's only achieved when we pull the handbrake. And we show in our bodies and we show in this camp that this movement, that this movement's organized. It has structure. You can have structure without hierarchy. You can have structure and creativity without oppression, without sexism, without class classism. And this is what we're showing. But it's painful. And what I worry about is you'll leave here and you'll forget that this movement transcends this park. Today, Occupy is in 1980 cities. It's much bigger than this. Thank you for listening to me 
I've been to many occupiers and everyone is different and they all have trouble and they're all winning <laughs> because they have trouble <laughs> and they're working it out and that's really hard work but it's the work worth doing thank you I like how it said like we don't have to have like you know like a set